Dustin, yeah. I already sent you the shooting schedule for okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Go over it. Okay, I got and, that. And uh, yes, right here in time. Okay, I'm you always are, on time. Yes, you are so important. I'm so... what? Important, important. Why would you say I'm impotent? You're telling the whole world that I'm impotent. That's not something you want to tell the whole world. I'm impotent? Yes. I, I'm giving a compliment. Oh, I thought you said impotent, but you're saying important. Like impotent, I-M-P-O-T-E-N-T. -E important, I-M-P-O-R-T-A-N-T. Because impotent means I have a problem with my sexual ability. Oh, God. Yeah, not impotent, Q. I'm really? sorry. I'm sorry yeah, no, for it's okay. mispronouncing. It's okay. No problem. Okay, so okay. So today, I think you guys can maybe guess what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about language barriers. So right now, thank you, Kuan. I am not impotent. I am important. <laughs> the oi. What's up, Justin? I was talking with Qan earlier, and she said I was impotent. We're filming. Impotent? <laughs> really? Impotent, yeah. She's like, Dustin, you're so impotent, but she meant important, and it completely threw me off guard. So if something throws you off guard, you're not expecting that. So yeah, it threw me off guard. She's like, you're impotent. I was like... In front of the camera? In front of everyone! Oh, We're me. filming! Yes! Not only killing, but a lot of Vietnamese people did that. Yeah, I'm sure. So throw somebody off guard or caught somebody off guard is to catch somebody in a situation that they were not expecting. So for example, you know, I'm talking to my best friend and she says, Dustin, I'm pregnant. I'm like, what? That, that threw me off guard. Actually, it reminds me, sometimes when I'm speaking with Vietnamese students, yeah. uh, I, don't, I may say this wrong, but they say, if you do they, they did, you will die. Okay, no star where, sugar you, you, you go. go, sugar me, me, me go. go. And I'm completely like, I don't understand this at all because I'm trying to pick up on what they're saying, I'm trying to understand. But with this, I, I can't get their drift. Yeah, so, I can understand that. So to get someone's drift is to understand what they're meaning. But with this, I don't get the drift of this Vietnamese students. I can't get their drift. But, you know, a lot of Vietnamese young people just mispronounced a lot of words. Yeah, for sure. Like, fire, fi, fine, they just pronounce fine. Yeah, because sometimes, like, depending on the context. Yeah. Yeah, but for me, it's like when they say that, it's like I'm completely at loss. I don't know. Like, do they mean this? Yeah, we don't understand Co a thing. Be it? Yes. But sometimes I feel like there are some people who Butcher the words? Yeah, butcher. Butcher. So butchering the words is like ruining the sentence, making it really bad. Like when I speak Ting Viet with you. Uh, yeah, you, you butcher the words. Yes, word. I know. Mecca, I know. Mecca. But I'm very shy about Sometimes Mecca. I speak English, I butcher the word. At a loss. So this is referring to something where you don't know what to say or what to do. So for example, maybe I get fired from my job. And I'm at a loss. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Hey, Dustin, let's change the topic. It reminds me of my trip to China last month. And we had so many language barriers because they didn't speak English. Okay, so language barriers. So maybe like you're using sign language, trying to talk to them. For me, I would love to watch you do that because it would never be a dull moment. So sure. If something is, a, it's never a dull moment, it means it's always exciting. So it's, I'm kind of the, hello. <laughs> no. How are you? So Just not like that. But um, there was a situation that I would remember forever. What when happened? I was going to the security check yeah. at the airport, and I, I, I want to tell them that I want my staff back. And I was like, hi. Want <sighs> the shampoos back, and they thought like I want to wash my hair, and they took me to the restroom. I'm a loss. So, but the thing is, it's like for you, you could say problem. It's like you were jumping through hoops. Ah, yes. So, like uh, jumping through hoops, like performing a lot of difficult tasks, is the language barrier. It's like you're trying to do this.
to jump through hoops. A hoop is like a circle and jumping through, but it's nothing to do with that. If somebody has to jump through hoops, it's, we say, maybe difficult obstacles that they're trying to overcome. So for example, your boss at work says, you must do this, 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 and this. And it's so difficult. It's like jumping through hoops. It's a very difficult task. Yeah, so jumping through hoops and also too, it's like, because maybe it gave rise to a lot of problems. Yeah, and misunderstandings. Okay, absolutely. So to give rise to something, it means to cause something to happen. You know, even as a foreigner, sometimes yeah. foreigners mispronounce words. Actually, I don't even want to say mispronounce words, they just pronounce it differently. Mm -hmm. So for example, like in the United States, the word ask, like I want to ask you a question, some people ask. pronounce it as ax, ax. And then even like water, I'm American, so water. Or how about like tomato, tomato. Ah. So the pronunciation, it's, it's very different throughout the world. So maybe some things I say could be different than someone else. Because if you look at it from an English standpoint, maybe there's a universal way of pronouncing it. But if you look at it from linguistics, the study of language, then maybe there's more areas where pronunciation, it can be different. It's okay. Mm, what Dustin has just said may give rise to a lot of like heated discussions. Yes. So. So again, give rise to something, so like a heated argument or a heated debate, so a fighting, a very strong conversation, so fighting about something. I want to hear your experiences. My experiences, okay, so I have lots of experiences in Vietnam. So one thing uh, I would say is sometimes Vietnamese, they would have like cookie cutter English. So cookie cutter English or cookie cutter, it's like the sameness, it's like mass produce, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. So for example, a lot of students in Vietnam, most, I wouldn't say everyone, but it's like, Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? But they don't, they don't even ask me in the intonation. You? I'm fine. And you? I'm <laughs> yes. fine, thank you. And you always. Yes, so always. often that would be like cookie cutter English because um, as a native speaker, fine doesn't really mean that much. So it's like, are you good fine? Are you bad fine? I don't really know what you're saying. Yes. But uh, sometimes, you know, when I'm speaking with Vietnamese, they're explaining something to me and they're missing maybe key words or they're missing some words. And for me, I would use the phrase like I'm, I'm trying to connect the dots or I'm putting two and two together. This is for me, I'm trying to understand. So trying to connect things so I can understand what they're saying. Um, but again, it, it throws me off guard. But even me trying to speak Ting Viet, uh, maybe I throw a lot of people off guard and they have to connect the dots and put two and two together when I speak Ting Viet. <music> Connecting the dots and putting two and two together. This is referring to maybe a situation you don't understand, but you're trying to understand it, but you're taking information and you're trying to put it all together to understand. So sometimes when I'm speaking with Vietnamese students, I don't really know what they're saying and I'm really confused, but I'm trying to connect the dots or I'm trying to put two and two together so I understand what they're saying. And the first time when, met, when I met Justin, he talked to me just like, Anh muốn cà phê không đừng không sự không đá. Like, I'm totally at loss. I didn't know so anything. My pronunciation yes. is not that bad. No, but I didn't understand what you were saying at that time anyway. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> all right, we will talk more about that. And now please watch the following clip of Dustin. Hi. Uh, em xin như gong ting ting. Người em thơm như mùi mộng tôm. What the heck? I guess I failed. Yes, it's so small like it. Dude, you see that girl? Yeah, I know. She's walking by. I'm like, I'm trying to give her a signal, like checking her out. To give somebody a signal is like trying to get their attention from them. So here she's walking by. I'm like, what's up, girl? What's up? You know, checking her out. Dude, okay, you're Vietnamese. I, I like teach me how do I flirt with Vietnamese women because I wanna, I wanna hit on her, but I. I no, no, you. What? You don't hit her. No, I'm not gonna hit her. Hit on her is like ah, to talk to her. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. hit on her. No, no, not this. But I want to ask her out. I want to ask her on a date. Do you know any uh, pickup lines in Ting oh, Viet? Oh, it's my job. Your job? Yeah. 
when you see that pretty girl, yeah, you have, you have to. Em xin, em xin, ting ting, em xin như con ting ting. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means you are so beautiful. And I ask her, I say em, em xin con, em xin, em xin như như con ting ting, con ting ting. That means you're so beautiful. Okay, good. Okay, em xin con như ting ting, em xin, em xin như con ting ting, ting ting, em xin như con ting ting. Right. Okay. Okay. What else? Do I say anything else? Dude, she was so good looking. You say, người em thơm như mùi mắm tôm. Em như say it again. Người em thơm. Người em thơm như mùi mắm tôm. Như mùi mắm tôm. Yes. You you say you say that like you uh tell. Okay. She smell like. Dude, I'm so excited. Like a flower. Vietnamese women, they love this. They love it absolutely. Okay, so it's a perfect pickup line. Just do it. Okay, dude, wish me luck, man. Yes. Good luck. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, because the vibe you give out is more important. Yeah, so the vibe, it's kind of like the energy. So the thing is, in some aspects, you're speaking to someone and they don't understand you very well. They look at your facial expressions, your body language, the tone of voice, that is your vibe. So. The vibe you give out is also very important in many circumstances when you're learning a language. Hey Dustin. Hey V. Do you have a good vibe? Uh, I, I'll answer that later. <laughs> Dustin, you know what? Follow us editors, sometimes they make a fuss that yes. they have difficulties listening to us speaking English because their English is kind of below par. Yeah, so below par is below average. I know, because sometimes they're like, Justin, you speak too fast. Oh my god! Talk to me, Oh, sorry, Tom. Yeah, so V, how does she actually edit the scripts when her English is below par? Oh, không sao. All right, so now we're going to wrap up the show with some cookie cutter English. I'm going to give you some examples. So, okay, uh, this is one of the cameramen, Hui. So, Hui, say xin chào, but hello. Hello. Nomra! Okay, good, good, good. Okay, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, and you? And you, you! Okay, not too much. Not going up with the tone. So, okay, we're gonna say peace, like goodbye and peace. Peace. No, no, peace. Peace. No, no, you're saying di ve sin, no di ve sin. Okay, no di ve sin. So, okay, so for these guys, you can see that their English is below par, but thank you so much for watching the TV show today, you guys. Hope you learned something and stay tuned. We'll see you very, very soon and follow us.